Welcome to the Reboot franchise. Big thing, first thing this week, Chris Wormley has been cleared. Now we never tend to take players back, and it's always obviously to do with how his ratings look, and the speed going down to 65. Now obviously he is a 3-4 defensive end, but that makes him close to useless to us. He's 65 speed, what are we supposed to do with that? He'll, he won't catch anybody with that speed. So, you know, we'll leave him there. Big game coming up against the Bengals. We already played the Bengals once this season. We played them at home and we lost. We've lost every game in the division so far. We've won two games, lost four. Three of those games have been lost to all three of our divisional rivals. And this week and then the next week, we'll be playing the Bengals and Browns. So we're in the division and these are games we've got to win. You've got to go 500 in your division if you've got any hope of having a successful season But we know what the Bengals look like and we know that John Ross caused us no end of problems Now I think the easiest solution to that is we've got to play more zone But if we're gonna play zone it means we need more pressure because you cannot play zone for a long period of time We will lose players if the quarterback, you know has all day to stand in the pocket now The three-man line here obviously isn't about bringing the pressure But we need a good game from them where we really need it is from Tyus Bowser, DJ Alexander, Hunter Washington. Let's play this game against the Bengals. I'm not going to say I think we've got a chance because I'm not accepting anything less than winning this game. So the Cincinnati Bengals, we know what we need to do to beat them. We know what we have to be careful for. And they start here with a pass. Andy Dalton is able to get that pass out. Marlon Humphrey with the tackle. Third and one now. And Andy Dalton under some pressure is sacked and he'll hold him to a field goal. We go for it on fourth and one here. And we are stopped. Geno Atkins making a big play, getting the Bengals the ball back. First and ten, completion over the middle to AJ Green. Terrence Brooks in on the tackle on a third and four. Still moving the ball, a missed tackle there. Marlon Humphrey taking down Tyler Eifert, but the Bengals right now moving the ball. Giovanni Bernardo fumbling the ball there. It's recovered by Terrence Brooks, and we get the ball back. Now running with Trayvon Bromley, trying to take advantage of this turnover. And on third and ten, coverage is blown. Tariq Cohen is wide open, just overthrown, but he makes the catch. Can get up again, and he's got the speed to keep going. Tariq Cohen will make it into the end zone here. Four, six points on an 84-yard touchdown. A huge play by Cohen. Gives us the lead, 7-3 now. Bengals with the ball back, going over the middle again to AJ Green, who's away. Marlon Humphrey trying to catch him, but he's not got the speed. And AJ Green follows it up with a big touchdown of his own. Back-to-back -back big plays. So first and 10, running with Trayvon Bromley. And Trayvon Bromley's got a taste for big plays, and he wants one of his own. And now he's going. George Iloka can't catch him. Perfect can't catch him. And Bromley, third big play in a row. Third and eight now for the Bengals. Finally, this game is looking a bit more normal and Andy Dalton under some pressure and Tyus Bowser gets in there for the sack. So they punt away to Jakeem Grant. Jakeem Grant looking, he's about to be tackled. No, he's not. Gets away from that and now he's got a bunch of space. Jakeem Grant may take this all the way. Another big play. They will not stop happening in this game and we take the lead and extend the lead rather. 21-10 to 10 the score right now but Giovanni Bernard making people miss. Xavier Gooden finally bringing him down. Second and seven now, Dalton back to pass at the 25-yard line, looking for someone. Good coverage, but he had enough time in the end, and a spin move there by Mixon gets him away from Jacobs, and he's in for the touchdown score, 21-17 to now, as we try and run the ball again with Bromley. Under two minutes left in this first half, and on third and three, a lofted pass there for Juju Smith-Schuster, and he makes the catch under pressure. First and ten, one minute left in this game and a sack there will hold us to a field goal. Third and eight, beginning of the second half, completion there to Jeff Jennings. Second and twenty now, looking to make up for some of those yards and Parker is there with the catch. An injury timeout, third and four, a completion, no it's not a completion, broken up pass, final second, Juju Smith-Schuster tried but couldn't make the catch. Hunter Washington in with the tackle on Bernard here. Third and five and it's a big completion to Tyler Eifert, a huge missed tackle, Eifert is gone. Casey Jacobs trying to catch him. Will he get to him in time? Just stops him at the two-yard line. Then first and goal. Dalton going straight back to Eifert. And he finishes what he started there with the touchdown. The score again tied now at 24 apiece. Dalton passing again to one of his tight ends. And he's away. Jacobs making all the tackles right now. Second and eight at the 28-yard line. Again with some time here. Again going to the tight ends. Andy Dalton not having to do much else right now. One spin move by Bernard here. Another spin move by Bernard and he is into the end zone. Now the Bengals take the lead 31 to 24. So of course we're trying to get the points back and Trayvon Bromley finding space running it. We're not panicking. We're running the ball still in the fourth quarter down by one touchdown. 
We don't need to start just throwing it around, but when we do, we make completions like that to Judas Smith-Schuster. Running the ball again with Trayvon Bromley, finding space, picking up first downs, fighting through contact, tackle down to the eight, and then on the five-yard line, trying to go around the outside. Tariq Cohen manages to get there. Corner of the end zone. He's in for the touchdown. Game is tied again at 31 apiece. And a lofted pass there. And a good tackle by Terrence Brooks. Stopped that one going for much more. But it was still a big completion. AJ Green with the catch, of course. And then again going across the middle. This time it's Brandon LaFell. And defenders just struggling to do anything. Completely missing him. And he's tackled inside the five at the four-yard line. And on third and goal, Andy Dalton is sacked. Will hold him to a field goal. A huge play here because it gives us a chance to take the lead if we get downfield. And Trayvon Bromley is doing exactly that. Getting downfield. Second and inches. We're going to go deep. Trayvon Bromley is overthrown. If that was on target, he would have been into the end zone. More blown coverage by the Bengals. First and 10 out of the 17-yard line. The completion there to Juju Smith-Schuster on third and two. We try and go with the run with Tariq Cohen and he cannot get it. We'll have to settle for a field goal. And the Bengals won the coin toss in overtime, so they've got the ball here. We have to try and stop them. The defense has got to step up. 34 to 34 the score. It's been high scoring up to this point, and now they're going deep. Trying to go for it all, but the pass is broken up by Eric Murray. Casey Jacobs came in in the end as well. And third and 13. This is the chance now to stop them. Throwing it to the sideline. AJ Green, he's not called complete, but then it's reviewed and it was complete. And AJ Green, again, will not be stopped, goes into the end zone. You know what? The worst thing is we deserve to lose that game. I mean, look at the score of the Bengals. We absolutely deserve to lose that game. We, we, we were terrible on defense. I mean, we can just hope that Chris Wormley coming back makes a difference because the defense stinks. They were good before and they suck now. Wes Manley played a good game. 222 yards, 68% completion percentage, a touchdown. Trayvon Bromley went 180 yards at a touchdown. Receivers played well as well, although, you know, those three drops here, we don't need drops, but they're going to happen. Then the defense, I don't even want to look at them. I hate them. Hunter Washington even made some big plays, but the, the pass defense, every time it was the same, a Bengals player drags across the deep middle and they lose him and he gets the completion. And then AJ Green makes sideline catches for completions. The one that was overturned that I don't think should have been this defense. Please, Chris Wormley and obviously when Tim Williams comes back, they've got to be the difference makers because we can't do anything else. We don't get any pressure, not consistently, and they just keep completing the easy passes where we've got the quarterback. It should be a coverage sack. But there's just nobody coming through for the sack. And that's because we're missing two guys who get a lot of sacks, Chris Wormley and Tim Williams. So at the end of this week, we're going to scout. I don't even know what we're going to scout. Replacements for everybody at this point. Just taking a look at defensive tackles here. A preliminary look. And, well, there's a couple of half-decent looking ones, but no one that's standing out right now. So this week, we've got the Browns at home. This is a game we have to win. We shouldn't have lost the last one. I am so, you know, so disappointed to have lost the last one. We're better than this. This defense is just not playing like it should. Now, we did leave the defensive line a little vulnerable because we didn't manage to bring Brent Urban back. So we're starting a guy who was a backup last season. And again, we lost Chris Wormley. Maybe we could have done a little better at the outside linebacker position. But DJ Alexander's a good backup. It's not really his fault. Safety's... We didn't really have a chance to draft anyone. Well, let's make the change here again. Jalen Myrick changed back to Lorenzo Doss. Maybe because we were playing more zone, we should have kept Lorenzo Doss, but that wouldn't have helped the pressure. It's the pressure that's the problem right now. And the offense played really well. The offense played really well. I mean, Manly twice overthrew literally wide open players. They were able to make the catch. That's obviously not great, but still, we made the completions. The offense played well. But anyway, time to face the Browns. We just played them two weeks ago. As in, we know exactly what they're about. It's a game we should have won the first time. It's a game we will win this time. Zero excuses. Is We will just win it. There's no talking about anything else. And after that, we'll have the bye week. Which, of course, means it's time to take a first look at the projections for the end of season awards. And we've got a couple of guys we expect to be up for offensive rookie, defensive rookie... You know, we've got some things we should be looking at this season. Cleveland Browns at the Baltimore Ravens. This is a game we should be winning. It's a game we want to be winning. And Cooper Maddox, the rookie quarterback, starts moving early in this game. Cannot get a completion there. Third and four. A chance to get them off the field. Instead, it's a completion to the rookie tight end. And they get a first down. Now first and ten at the 20-yard line. Maddox with another completion to David Njoku. 
He likes to go to these tight ends. Second and goal. They run with Isaiah Crow, but he is stopped there. Xavier Gooden in on that tackle. Third and goal. And Xavier Gooden with a goal line stop. Just stood the man up right in front of the goal line. Saved a touchdown by inches. So, third and five. The Browns have three points, and we have to punt the ball away after a sack there. Third and five for the Browns now, and they try and go for it, and that should have been an interception. And more than just an interception, it should have been a touchdown by Terrence Brooks. And Judas Schuster, a rare drop there. Should have caught that one. He was, of course, hit straight away, but still, third and eight now. Cooper Maddox going downfield, going deep, but Terrence Brooks is able to break that one up. So, we get the ball back. Now, Trayvon Bromley with some running room. Moving the ball well. So fourth and two we go for it. Trayvon Bromley again on the run and picking up a whole bunch more than just those two yards. It was a risky play to try, but we did it and it worked out for us. And Trayvon Bromley again. First down after first down after first down. And first and ten, Trayvon Bromley again goes into the end zone for a touchdown. The running game working very well so far in the game. And of course, we have to kick the ball away. And we know they're dangerous here. We've got Jabril Peppers returning this kick. Jabril Peppers looking to take it inside. Gets away from one man, but then he's hit. The forced fumble picked up. And we're going to get into the end zone here to make this game 14-3. to Cooper Maddox now got something to do here. And he's looking to do it in the air. And he finds his man near the sideline. Third and four now. Trying to get them off the field again and extend this lead. And a big hit there. Breaks up that pass, and we didn't do anything with our possession. So the Browns have the ball. Again, a Cooper Maddox going downfield there, finding his man on the reception. Marlon Humphrey in coverage. It's Kenny Britt with the catch. First and 10 again for Maddox. Off the play action. Finds a wide open Corey Coleman. Casey Jacobs couldn't make a play, and they go for the two-point conversion, which they get as well. David and Joku with that reception. And the score now 14 to 11. But Trayvon Bromley finding space. Trayvon Bromley breaking a big one. Trayvon Bromley in for his second touchdown. Huge play, running, working so well against the Browns. And we managed to stop them here on a third down. So they go for it on fourth down with a fake field goal, which we managed to stop. 21-11 to 11 and the ball. And now after Trayvon Bromley's had some big runs, we give it to Jaquan Barber. And Barber is gone, breaks the big one. He's done this multiple times this season already, and he's about to get another one. They're not fast enough to catch him, and he is into the end zone. Iron sharpens iron, and both of them have touchdowns. Score now 28 to 11. Looking to return this again, and it's another fumble, a recovery again. Ortiz falls down, and at the six yard line, Bromley looking to take this one in. Is stopped one yard short. Then a quick pitch there to Tariq Cohen, who takes it into the end zone, and it's another rushing touchdown, the fourth of the game. 35 to 11, the score right now. Defense playing well as well. Cooper Mannix. Looking to do something though, trying to bring his team back. He's got eight minutes to do it, it's not likely. But if they get a touchdown here, they've got a bit of a chance at the very least. But we have the ball, third and nine. Got to pick up a first down. Instead, it's an interception. Could be costly. We can't give him the game back now. And on third and six, to try and run with Duke Johnson Jr. It doesn't work, so they go for it on fourth and six. Maddox rolling to the right, throwing to the left. And somehow, he completes it to Corey Coleman for the touchdown. Score, 35 to 24. So we have to try and run the clock out here, of course. And we can do it with a trio of running backs. Bromley with that carry. Barber with this carry running over people. And then on second and 17, we hand it off to the third running back, Tariq Cohen. And he's about to finish this off with a touchdown in the corner. Maybe not necessary, but we're not going to just stop in front of the goal line if we're there for the touchdown. Tariq Cohen getting his second of the game. And we'll see another touchdown here by the Browns late in the game. I told you we're not losing this game. Now, we did allow more points than we should have done. But this game was in the bag the entire time. You can look at the lines there. We were ahead every quarter except for in the first one, but then we got going and everybody played pretty well. Again, we gave up some big plays we shouldn't have done and Wes Manny threw an interception, but he, well, he didn't do much at all, but it was the, the, the 10 passes he did throw, he completed six of them. So, you know, but as I said before, who cares now? Who cares if we're not throwing for a lot of yards? because we ran for over 280 of them. 164 for Trayvon Bramley. With, he's the one with the realistic looking numbers. Of course, not not that this is unrealistic. These, you know, Jaquan Barber broke a big one, but Trayvon Bramley is, you know, that's what you can expect from a guy. 20 attempts, 164 yards, 8.2 yards per carry, two touchdowns. Jaquan Barber breaking the huge one again, as he's done more often than anybody else. I think he's had more long touchdowns than Tariq Cohen has which is ridiculous. Jacob Barber is the slowest running back we've got on the team. But he obviously got himself a touchdown as well. Tariq Cohen just finishing off drives, two touchdowns for him. I mean, the fact we've got three running backs who between them scored five touchdowns 
is insane. We can absolutely live and thrive behind this running game. Receiving is barely even worth looking at. You know, some guys caught some passes for some yards. Judas Mishusta did drop one. I mean, you know, was forced to drop one, but he dropped one. And then we take a look at the defense. Xavier Gooden leading the team with nine tackles. Then we've got Hunter Washington with seven. Then DJ Alexander with six. I like to see three linebackers starting that off. Sacks, not good enough. I mean, I, and not even close to good enough. Are you kidding me? Half a sack for two guys. And that was because the quarterback ran into Willie Henry. That's the only reason we got that. No interceptions, but we did today force fumbles. Both of these on kick returns, well, on kickoff technically for us. So with that, we're three and five. It's not great, but we win our next two games in a row. We've got a bye week as well to refresh the players. We win our next two. Oh, and that will actually be big for returning players. That bye week will come in very handy. Might bring back both Chris Wormley and Tim Williams. And we might just bring back Tim Williams early because we, we've got zero pressure at the moment and we can't win games like that. We got lucky against the Browns getting one sack split between two players that they gave us. So returning from injury, Chris Wormley is available to play again. And then Tim Williams has been cleared. Now, will he come back the game afterwards? I don't know, but just having Wormley there is huge. If we get Tim Williams back, that obviously will be great full stop. Here we go, yearly awards. Looking at the MVP. And look down here. So, you know, count them out. Quarterback, there's one running back. Quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Next running back and one of two running backs, Trayvon Bromley, seventh in MVP voting. Coach of the year, well, be a while till we turn up. Didn't mean to switch straight away anyway. But offensive player of the year, Trayvon Bromley is fourth. I'm feeling good about offensive rookie of the year. Defensive player of the year, wouldn't expect to see anybody there. Offensive rookie of the year, of course, Trayvon Bromley. Should be on top. I don't even know how many yards he's got right now, but I know it's ridiculous. Jaquan Barber in the third place. Then Wes Manley in fifth place. You know, three guys. And Wes Manley is not even seen as the long-term solution. I don't actually know how he's managed to make it here. I guess just as the quarterback of a winning team. We're not even winning that many games. But, oh, Hunter Washington in second place. Tyrone Stock. Don't even remember him from the draft. And then we've got... Jacobs, Casey Jacobs down here as well, but Hunter Washington, we're gonna get some more turnovers or something and he can maybe get that first spot. That would be great as well to have. And of course, Trayvon Bromley is currently the favorite. Absolutely ridiculous what he's doing at the moment. I don't know how many yards, but it's more than he should have probably. Keeps breaking big ones, keeps grinding teams down. And then Jaquan Barber as well. What a combination, iron sharpens iron. <laughs> 